six-year term. Given the attached documents, which are readily available on the internet, I ask you to review the, these documents and come to your own conclusions about whether or not it is appropriate for Mr. Briggs to serve on the Planning Commission. Next Monday, we should give Mr. Briggs a deciding vote. If we choose to deny the appointment of Mr. Briggs, the appointment will be reopened for more candidates. Whichever, whichever way the council votes, please know that I will support the final decision, even if I am in the minority. Sincerely, John Russell. Personal issue, and that's how I took it from Councilman Russell, and that's why I asked for it to be tabled as well and brought to this workshop so that we could get air these issues out. Um, if, if Councilman Russell has a problem with Mr. Briggs, uh, I think it's fine that they both know where each other stands. But at this point in time, I don't have this information until now that would point, good, bad, or otherwise about Mr. Briggs. So, from what I know of him prior to this meeting, uh, I wouldn't have any problem with uh, him being approved on the planning commission. But that being said, there were some strong feelings two weeks ago, and that's why I wanted to brought up tonight. Um, just like Rod, I can say that the only reason that I was willing to postpone the confirmation of Mike Briggs to the Planning Commission is because there was obviously um, information going around um, in opposition to his appointment that was not generally shared by the entire council, but only a few members. So um, I, that was the one reason that I was, that I approved delaying the discussion is so that we could all have this on the table. And, you know, I mean, really, frankly, I, even some of the things that are on the CW watch, I don't know how you can show this as evidence. Anybody can post any name they want on an internet blog site. So. It's, and you know, I, I don't keep up with a lot of this, but um, John, I just think you're, you and Mike have a personal disagreement and you're trying to push that to the limits. I think that Mike was selected by the, count, by the committee appropriately and this town is run by more than four council members run by a community as well. What is our job then on council in regards to these appointments? Are we then just to just approve everything that comes across? No, the it's good to have discussion. Mm -hmm. However, if we have staff members and uh, citizens and public, you know, and a public uh, or planning commission member that they post this recommendation towards a, to us, I think we have an obligation to consider it totally. And, um, if there were a case where there might be a criminal charge against Mr. Briggs, then certainly we would have every right and certainly the responsibility to oppose his appointment. Uh, John, the only problem I'm having is that it was, it was apparent to me that there's a personal problem with Mr. Briggs and you. Uh, as far as his, out, his uh, uh, qualifications, if you bring to me more than hearsay off the blog, mm -hmm. then I'm, 
I'm willing to listen. Please understand, there's the blog is only a small portion of what I've just brought. And I, and I will this read through this. This is the Columbian. This is this is more than just uh, excerpts off the blog. But convince me, this is more than a personal vendetta. This is not a personal vendetta. No. No. You've made it pretty clear. It's not. I, you know, we need to be also be very careful because I'd like to know where we're at in regards to. Mr. Briggs uh, sending an email or a phone call talking about getting a lawyer. So I need to be sure on what we can say and what we can't say um, because that's very important. That's why I brought you. Do you want to field that one? Well, when a person has counsel or does not have counsel, it has nothing to do with whether a reason is qualified to be on counsel in the, or on planning commission. So sure. a full and frank discussion I think is appropriate. Okay. I'd like to refer the council to an editorial that uh, Mr. Bridge wrote on, for the 3 August 2010 edition of the Kansas Washougal Post Record. <coughs> In that he says, and I, I'm selecting uh, phrases out of here uh, so I don't have to read the whole thing. Councilman John Russell, his efforts are only a way for him to grab media attention to further his own political ambitions. That's a disparaging remark. Council, Councilman, Councilman Michael Delavar is part and parcel with the local uh, charge of the Tea Party people who are eager to take on the current GOP in Southwest Washington. That's disparaging. His recent comments during city council sessions are aimed not at and this is about Delaware again, are aimed not at Washougal or city business, but rather to draw attention to his own involvement in this ultra-conservative national Tea Party movement. That is disparaging. Councilman Dave Shoemaker likes to become emotionally charged, likes to attack everything with the word stimulus attached to it, and likes to verbally attack the state of Washington. I don't think it's an attack on the state or the county. Uh, when you criticize what they're doing. This has been pointed out by many speakers here tonight. Um, as far as becoming emotionally charged is concerned, there are some really good authorities that would disagree on that. The first one that I would put forward would be my first wife, who called me emotionally detached. The second would be my comrades in combat in Vietnam, who called me cold-blooded. Mr. Uh, Briggs goes on, I believe a much more prudent approach for Mr. Shoemaker would be to honestly try to work hand in hand with the longer term, more experienced members of our hardworking council. He obviously lacks an appreciation for my background and experience. And I find it rather difficult to take advice like that from someone 25 years my junior. I've got a son, Mr. Briggs' age. I think, uh, he says, I think every single thing that comes before Washougal City Council should be looked over intently to see if any part of it might benefit Washougal, and then to intelligently look over it with a team approach rather than a one-man, know-it-all approach. What's the implication of that? Those that disagreement disagree with him, have a one-man, know-it-all approach. And I, quite frankly, don't see that. Even the members of this council that I disagree with 